Cup Creations. Today I'm going to show you a few basics of fake bait. So let me turn you down and show you what you need. Okay, I think you can see there. Okay, first of all, you're going to need gaps and cracks. That is something very important that you'll need. That's part of fake baking. That's a very big part of fake baking. You'll have to have it. We're just going to... Okay, you'll also need some silicone molds like this or this. You can use cupcake cups. You can use anything you want to use. You can use cups like this. You can use anything as long as this is colored because you don't want your fake bake to be this color. Okay, I've been shaking this up. And you want to shake it up for, um, you read, okay, it's called gaps and cracks, okay? That is for insulation for around windows. That's what it's used for, but this is what we use it for. We use it as cupcake bases or any kind of bases really that we need. So I'm gonna show you what you do with it. You read whichever can that you have. Okay, this one says shake it up for a minute. You can get it at Walmart. It's $3 and something cents. Probably $3.97, I'm not really sure. But you're gonna shake it up, shake it up, shake it up. I'm trying to make sure it's shook up enough. Let me get you over here just a tad. Okay, and then you're going to take this little thing off of it. It's on every gaps and crack. Take the lid off, and then you're going to screw it on. Now, you always... Oh, I really forgot my gloves. You always want to use gloves. Always, 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 because when this stuff gets on your fingers, it's very, very sticky, and it does not want to come off. Okay, my gloves are right around the corner. I'm so sorry to do this, but I really need the gloves to show you. I'm right back. Okay, I have my gloves here. You want to put one on each hand because even if you think you're not going to get any on you, it always abs it's always usually going to happen. I'm not sure why, but... It just does. Okay, now you kept it, keep it shook up as good as you need it. And then whatever bases you're going to use, I'm going to use these here. You're going to have them ready. Okay, now if you just have like a cupcake liner, let me show you what you would do. Okay, because before I just used a, um, a muffin tin and a cupcake liner, but I don't have any more cupcake liners on hand, okay? So I'm gonna act like this is a cupcake liner. What you would do with a cupcake liner, because they're so light in weight, you would cut you a circle and put it in the bottom of a cupcake liner because, like I said, they are so light. Now this isn't, this is a cupcake cup. This isn't a liner, but I'm gonna show you what you do. You put this in the bottom, and some people use rocks or pennies or whatever. But I'm gonna use this. Just something with a little bit of weight in it, okay? And this is what you do. You make sure your gaps and crack is shook up enough, and then you go to each one of you, just little spray a little bit, okay? And it's, uh, whenever you push this, it's very hard to push no, no, no. It's very hard to control because it comes out in a big, you know what I'm saying? Like this is under pressure. So you want to just barely do a little. And you don't want to fill it up more than halfway full because this is, this one um, expands to one inch, it says. But from my experience, there's always going to be one to three inches in every gaps and crack. But if you want the best gaps and crack, that would be Loctite. You can get that at Home Depot or Lowe's, I believe. I'm not sure what else. 
And if you have any questions, please write it in the comments because I am looking at the comments, okay? Okay, now that right there, see, I dropped that on there from the bottom and it's going to be sticky. But don't don't put it on anything. That, I usually do this outside, okay? So don't put it on anything that you are worried about getting messed up. I have a silicone mat here or I definitely would not be doing it outside. I have my extra gloves. I have everything I need here, okay? So we're going to go and fill these up halfway. And it will spread out. It, it will fix itself. And you don't really want to do that too much because when you do, the top of it will be very bumpy. Let me see. You see how this is kind of smooth here? But then there's a bump over here. You don't want it really to be bumpier than this. This is about as much as you would want. Oops, that's too much. Like I said, it's a little bit hard to control. When you get it in there, this is the spray that you want, not really this one. You just don't want it that big. If you can do it straight from above, that would be better. So it goes exactly straight in and it's gonna fill out can you see this one's already started to fill out? This is silicone. Anything silicone, you can spray right in it and it will come out. But if it was glass or even paper, it won't come out. Let me show you this right here. This is a cup that had gaps and cracks sprayed in it. This will not come out because you see it's sprayed up in there. But if it's in silicone, it will come out. It'll just pop right out. That is the ice cream cone. I mean, this is the cupcakes here, the cupcake bases. Now here I have some ice cream bases, ice cream cone. I'm gonna show you three or four different fake bakes, okay? But this is the ice cream cone. You do the same thing. You don't want to fill it up too much because it'll expand on its own. That's kind of ugly there. If you can fix it very easily with just like one little pushover, that's okay. But you don't want to have a bunch of little um, tweaks at the top there like that one. Okay. Now some of these may be too much, but you can always cut them down with the gaps and crack. You can always cut it down with a serrated knife or a foam knife, a hot knife, something like that. That's dedicated only for your fake bakes. Okay, and let me tell you something else about this gaps and crack. This gaps and crack, you when you open this one, or one of the cheaper brands, which is, this is only four dollars, but you can the Loctite I think is six something six ninety seven. When you open those, you have to use it all because of the stuff that this is made out of. It does not hold well in this thing here. So let me see what else I want to grab. Let me grab another one of these. Okay, I also like to make donuts. And this is my donut mold. And this one's a little bit hard to do because the top of it, you know, a donut is like this. So whenever you do the top of it, you have to cut it off because it's never gonna be flat and straight. Okay, maybe those won't be too much today, but usually they're big, puffy, and you have to cut it off, okay? Do you have any questions so far? 
When you open one of these, you have to have something nearby to use the rest of it in because you won't be able to save this till later, okay? With this stuff, it's very hard, and when it gets in that little pipe there, it gets too hard. You can't use it again. Actually, I've never found one that you can use again, but I've heard that Loctite, you can. This is also... <laughs> No, that was a donut. Did I say that was a donut or a cupcake? This is the cupcake. That is the donut down there. And that is big donut. Okay. Now let me show you how to make something else. Now this is just the base, you know. You have to go back and finish it later. After it gets dry, I don't remember how many hours, four to six hours, but I usually let it sit overnight. Okay, let me show you how I make a chocolate chip cookie. Straight from your hand, not with a mold. I have uh, two chocolate chip cookies in there, and they, one of them is one that I made with a mold, and one of them is one I made with hand, by my hand, with my hand. And it um, both looks the same. They both look the same to me. I've got them on one big fake bake, and you can't tell the difference. Okay, you're going to get something round. What I usually do is I have a, a, a cookie laying here. Even if it's the fake cookie, I have it here laying to the side. But right now I don't because it's on the fake bake. No, I don't have it here. I thought I, I did, but I don't. But it's okay. I know what a cookie looks like. No, it's right here. I see it. I see it. Okay, one of these cookies are made with a mold and one is not. Can you tell the difference? I can't. But if you can, tell me. Okay, now I'm going to make a cookie. I'm just going to make a round shape. This is also foam clay. I get this on Amazon. If you only get white, you can color it like these. But you shape your cookie. And this does not have to be perfectly round, okay? because a cookie is not perfectly round. I think that right there looks like a cookie, exactly. Now you either get a toothbrush or you can get, you get anything that has little um, ends to it. Like I'm gonna use this little foam clay tool. Do you see how this looks right here? I've just moved everything yesterday and I'm not sure where my toothbrush is, but I don't really need it. You can use whatever works for you. And this is gonna work just fine. All you wanna do is get your toothbrush or your foam clay piece and poke, 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 poke. It don't have to be any specific looking thing. It's from the sides, from the top. Any way you want it to look. You just poke a bunch of times, or I even have a wire brush. Sometimes I've used that. Okay, and then in this cookie, I see that there's some ridges here. Can you see that? Okay, so I want to lay something down. It could be a pen. It could be something straight. You know what I'm saying? Like something that has a point like this. I'm not sure if you have Cricut tools or anything like that. Uh-oh. Let me take this off. Forgot to take these off. So, I'm going to make some of these little lines, these little ridges here, in just different places on the cookie. And then I'm going to continue. Ooh, that's got, it feels like it's got that um, gaps and crack on it now because it was on the, there must have been some on that glove and I didn't know it.
You just do it any way you want to. But honestly, the toothbrush works. Here it is. Here's my toothbrush. It works so much better. This is what I did to the other one, and I don't know if you can tell the difference. If you can, let me know. I was supposed to message somebody and let them know that I was on today. She's the one that wanted to know how I did this. But I'll send her the video when I'm done. I wish I had her name pulled up here. But I don't. Who was that? Oh, um, no. Okay, well, I will have to text her when I'm... Oh, there she is. There she is. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, do you see how the cookie is changing its form and looking different? It doesn't look exactly like this yet, but it will by the time I'm done. You just do it for a few minutes until you are satisfied with your cookie. Okay, this is going to look like a chocolate chip cookie when I'm done because I'm going to put some of these little chocolate chips in it. Not these colors because I don't need those colors anymore, but you just put as many as these lines in here that you want. But to me, that's starting to look like a cookie. Do you think it does? Let me know if you do. I'd like to know. <laughs> And then you go over it so the lines aren't so harsh. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, that might be a little too big, but you can make it as big as you want because this isn't supposed to look so realistic. This is supposed to look like a chocolate chip cookie that's going on a fake bake. A fake bake is fake. It's just to look pretty and nice and all of that. Let me show you this little girl I made yesterday. And the little boy. Now, they're not finished, but I think they're pretty cute. Now, I also made these, and these are obviously fake bakes. Some marshmallow on a stick. <laughs> those are cute. I learned those from Crystal in the group. Um, glitz and glue secret recipe. She shows a lot of fake bake on YouTube and on Facebook. I also watched somebody called Tina's Treasures, Tina's Tasteful Treasures, Christie's Faux Creations, and Peep This, y'all. That that's the ladies I watch and learn a lot of things from each one of them. But okay, let me get some of this foam clay. I'm just going to get a little couple of fingers full here so I can make the chocolate chips and I'll show you how I'll do that. Okay, whenever you use foam clay, it's kind of, um, it's a little bit sticky. So you want to condition it so it will be ready to use. If you don't do that, it usually cracks. Do those look similar? I think they do. Let me move that out of my way so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, now I'm going to roll this into a ball and pinch little bitty pieces off of it. That's not big enough for me. You can be have them as small or as large as you want. Okay, here's a couple pieces right here. I'm gonna get four little pieces because I think three or five yeah, let me see. There's five little pieces. Okay, I'll decide which one I'll stop at. Okay, you roll your little ball into a ball on your table, silicone mat. And this is how I do it. I put it down here on the mat. I've never seen anybody else make these. This is just how I do it. And then you're going to hold the top and squeeze in towards the top and twist. When you do that, the bottom gets flat and the top gets kind of skinny. Do you think that looks like a chocolate chip? 
if you do you can put it on your cookie or if you don't you can continue to do this a little more you can make them as skinny as fat or whatever as you want that's got a little big a little bit of a big oh my fingernails have got this stuff in it anyways it's got a little bit of a point there but that's okay because that's how i want it okay now i'm not going to squish it in there like i did these i'm just going to sit these on top i'm going to roll it in a circle a little ball and then i'm going to turn my fingers in towards the top and make this little point at the top Do you think that looks like a chocolate chip? I'm gonna lay that one sideways because all of, oops, all chocolate chips are not standing straight up. I wanted to put it sideways, but it's still soft. What I did with these is I made the chips the night before and then I put them in there the next day. But roll your little chocolate chip in the ball and then twist can you see it I'll lay that one that way so you can see it then roll this one into a ball do the same and push down at the same time so you'll have your little flat part and then around See, they don't all look the same, and they're not all the same size. But if you want yours all the same and all the same size, you can do that. I just like mine a little different all over. Okay, I'm just going to do these five. And I think that looks fine. I wish I could get that one up and turn him over on his side and that one too. But they're okay. They're fine with me. And you can put, like I said, as many chips as you want on there. Just roll it in a ball. And if you mess up, it's clay. Just go back and do it again. I like the little short, stumpy ones like that. That looks like a real chocolate chip that you would... The, mini, the miniature chocolate chips, you know what I'm saying? Okay, now I like that. Okay, now when you get clay under your fingernails, I'm sorry about that this is all i do right here is i use the clay and then i get it out because it's from doing this right here okay now that is the chocolate chip do you think it looks like a chocolate chip cookie or not and if you don't you can still go back and poke it with your toothbrush or poke it with a little pokey thing there's a little piece of brown on the cookie I didn't want on there. Okay. There's our chocolate chip cookie. Now I want to show you how to make a macaron. The difference between a macaron and a macaroon, a macaron is round and it's got some sweet flavoring on the inside. A macaroon has coconut in it, okay? So let me show you what I'm gonna do. I'm going to use this clay here and I'm going to use this glass and I'll show you what for. Okay, I'm gonna get a little piece out for the center. Then I'm gonna get a little piece out for each side. And I know this is too much, but this is how you want to start. You don't want to start with very little. Okay. Always keep your clay closed up because when it dries out, you cannot use it. And if the bag that it's in does not work good enough, then put it in a Ziploc bag. I have gallon Ziploc bags that I use and that works just fine. Okay, now let me show you what I'm gonna do. First you condition your clay. Can 
condition, 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 which I've already done these, but. These are the foam clays I'm using today. It's from Bowles on Amazon. I can show you the links if you want them. You can make any color with the basic colors. Just add a little bit of blue, a little bit of white, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. This also comes with black. But for the center, I'm gonna use the white. And on each side, I'm gonna use the pink. I'm not gonna use this one here. I thought I was gonna use it. it. It is a different color pink, but I don't think it shows a different color pink on camera. So you just get a little piece that you would think will work and use that for your center. Another thing that is absolutely necessary in Fake Bake is spackle. You know, it's a big tub of spackle or you can get the little tubs of spackle at the Dollar Tree or different stores. But if you wanna get the best bang for your buck, you would go to Lowe's or Home Depot and get a big tub of spackle. This is the spackle that I have here. This is called DAP. And you have to have lightweight spackle. If you have any other spackle, it's not going to work. It's going to be too heavy, okay? So you always have to have the lightweight spackle. If you're enjoying this tutorial, will you please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel? I would appreciate that. That would be wonderful. That really helps me out so much. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is put each one of them in a ball. Doesn't have to be exactly perfect. It just has to be in a ball shape. And then squish it down straight in the middle just to make it flat. Now it may not be perfect, just have it as perfect as you can. Oh, my, my foam is over here. It's expanding a lot. Okay, now let me grab my cookie cutter. And you don't necessarily have to have a cookie cutter. I was just going to use something round. But I think I'm going to use a cookie cutter. Because my glass is too big. The last time I made these, I used a jar, just the top of a jar upside down. But let me show you what you do. Okay, you make it round. And then you use a piece of, where did my paper go? Oh, here it is. You use a piece of plastic wrap or foam, not foam. Use a piece of plastic wrap or press and seal, something like that, to do the top. And I'm out of press and seal or the phone or the plastic wrap so i'm just going to use a little piece of thin plastic okay it needs to go over the top of your foam so this is what i'm going to do and you do this so it has the nice round poof on top okay so you're going to lay this down lay your plastic on top of it your foam clay first and then your plastic and then you're going to do this you're going to push down and make a cookie shape okay now this is going to be the top of my macaron now pick it up carefully and set it to the side okay now the extra you just put over to the side now you do the same thing again using the same shape You lay your foam clay down and then your saran wrap. That's so it doesn't stick to anything. And so it makes this poofy top here puff out. And then you're gonna take what's around the cookie off. Cause you don't need that. But you wanna pick this up before you pick up your macaron. Okay, and this sticks to clay. This is clay, so it sticks to clay, okay? Now, you're gonna Put this over to the side, and we'll come back to that in a second. And then here's your third piece. Now you don't need, need, need the saran wrap for this. You just want the same shape. And that's it right there. 
So this is the center of the macaron. Now you're gonna go back to these pieces here and you're going to take a little toothbrush or whatever you wanna use and go around the edges to look like a macaron. Macarons are, are big, huge, and fake bake, okay? So then you go around the side right here and kind of, let me show you really close. You just do like the bottom quarter or the bottom third and make this little, I don't know what you would call it. I call it edge or whatever. But do you see how it looks now? It's got this little flat part here and then it's got these little, I don't know what these are called. What would you call them? Uh, anyways, you see what I'm doing, right? Okay, you're gonna lay that one down and then you're gonna go back to this one. You can do the same thing to this. Just like the bottom half of this or bottom third. Doesn't have to be precise. If you just do this, people would know what it is. And don't smash the top like I kind of have. I'm gonna puff it back up in a minute. And you can even do it like this while it's laying down. But to me, to make the bottom flatter, it just works a little better whenever I have it in my hand. Okay, now that's done there. I wanna make this a little bit flatter. Where it's all this, not flatter, but where it's all the same, you know what I mean? Just barely roll that on top. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my middle here and put it in the center. And I don't want it to smush down on there because I don't want it to be like blending in. I want it to look like a separate piece. Can you see that? Just barely, barely. Okay, that is your macaron. If you need to go back and do anything extra, you can do that, just don't push it all together. I mean, it's supposed to be together, but it's not supposed to blend together. And that is your macaron. Now, if you wanna have sprinkles or something on top, you would put some white, this is called tulip slick paint. This is what we, what I do. I mean, you just want to, where it looks like it has sprinkles on top, you would just go with this slick paint, go and make a little drip on the side. All over it, or just on half of it, whichever you prefer. You see what I'm doing? I'm coming down here and then going back up. But then you want to, Paint all this in right here, like just swirly. Swirl it around. Okay, now it's all filled in. Now you would drop your sprinkles on top. Okay, and I have some Halloween sprinkles here from Playco 3. But I have tons of sprinkles here. Let's see which ones I want to use. Okay. Play Code 3, in my opinion, is the best place to buy your sprinkles because you get, you get a great amount and you always get samples. Each time you go, you get samples. Okay. Now you just put your sprinkles on top. And voila, you're you're done. <laughs> Those are not okay. Here's the sprinkles. Sorry about the noise. I'm so sorry. Okay, here's the sprinkles I wanted. These are little flowers. I'm not gonna put these. I don't I don't need any more Christmas macarons. So let me show you these. These are some of the samples that Play Code 3 sent you. They send like three or four packs of these. They send all different kinds of things. And look, this is plenty enough for one or two. When this, for one or two projects. Now when this dries, it will 
they will harden up. It will harden up and it will look perfect. But make sure you get all your glitter and sprinkles on before you, you know, before it dries. Because if you don't, it won't stick. Now you put your glitter on top. Can you see it? You see the little flowers? And you can still put little pieces of white, yellow, any colors you want to, really. Do you have any questions? I can see you on here, I just don't know if you have any questions or not. I am gonna put a little bit of red and white on here just because I want some more color to that. See, play code three. They ship out fast, they have the best customer service, and you always, always, always get samples. I have a, a, a $5 code if anybody would be interested in that. And you, you turn it upside down and get rid of the rest. What do you think about the macaron? You like it? So today we made, let me show you the, the other ones that I've made already. Let me show you these foam cupcakes. Okay, this is the cupcakes. Can you see how big and fluffy they are? And I'm not gonna touch it with my hand, but do you see these? See, that's already, that's already pretty hard. That'll probably be ready in an hour or less. If I was to pull that out, it would come on out, but that would be wet in there. So I'm not gonna pull these out yet, okay? Now here's my, my big donut. You see what I'm talking about, about the top, how it's not very, it's not very flat. That's not even filled in all the way. It's, it's got a spot there. But you can work with it just a little bit here, but don't touch it. Don't mess it up. But if you break that seal right there, because it's like, it's got skin on top is what I would call it. And okay, I just wanted to fill in that spot there and it's pretty well filled in now. <laughs> okay, you can work with it a little bit, but not too much because you don't want to touch it. And then here is my huge cupcake. And I'll show you my, now that's definitely not dry. But you see it's coming away from the sides. It pops right out. Okay, so let me show you my ice cream cones. Now these all did pretty good because I guess the way they're shaped, you see. Some of them did perfect. And then after this, you would go back and paint them or use foam clay or whatever you wanted to use. But that can be a different tutorial. I just wanted to show you a couple of the basics today to get started and to know what you need. So to start, you would need some gaps and crack for sure. You would also need the spackle, lightweight spackle for sure. And you would need silicone molds. Silicone molds, you can have donuts or candy bars, whatever you want. And then you would also need foam clay. Now, these are not very expensive for what you're getting because with foam, with Play Code 3, you get two huge bags of these for $17. Anywhere else, they're between $13 to $16. So that's why I get those from there. But you can't get these pretty colors from there. They only have the basic colors. So if you want to get these pretty colors, and there's some beautiful colors, you get them at Glitz and Glue. Glitz and Glue on Etsy. And she's about to be on Amazon as well. 
So I hope I helped you out today. I hope you was able to learn some things that you didn't know. And if you did, give me a thumbs up, please, and subscribe to my channel. Commenting is also helpful, so anything you can do, I would really appreciate. If you have any questions, just put the questions in the comments, and I'll come right back and answer it. Thank you so much, and I appreciate you for watching. Bye-bye now. See you soon. And then whatever 